Hello everyone. Today we are talking about household equipment. In this picture, you can see the hand grinder and you can also see the fan. I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal and today we have the expert Ms. Manisha Gaur who is well versed in handling the household equipment, teaching about them and she will explain you what are the criteria we should look forward by selecting the equipment and how to maintain the household equipments. Now there are various terms we commonly used in household equipment, the tools, appliances, equipment, instruments. Let us see in this picture, you can see the percolator, how this is functioning, but we are talking about variety of tools, variety of appliances which we commonly used in the home. Let us define what is the tool. Hello everyone. Thank you Dr. Agarwa for introducing me so well. So I am basically here to tell you about how you can use household equipment. So first I will start with the various nomenclature of an household equipment. Like we have tools, we have equipments, we have instruments and appliances. So many scientific names. So we will now try to simplify them and to understand what they actually mean. So here it is written as Tool is any item or device that is usually held in hand. Yeah. This is in hand to do the task. It will open the bottle from this area and it will open the can. Next is appliance. What is appliance madam? Uh, appliance is a one unit that you have in your household to do a particular activity. So there are like various subunits. You have a tool. Tool is nothing but anything that you use to do a particular activity. And appliance is nothing but a combination of various tools held together. For example, if you see, this is, as we can all see, it's an electric This is an meter. appliance. Yeah. So we have, uh, if we take it into a one unit, then it is an appliance. But you can, you know, detach it. So these are the tools that are there to make the appliance do a particular job. So we use the uh, terms like instrument, we use the measuring instrument. If you see a measuring instrument, then the measuring instrument is, it can be used as a instrument also that you use for doing a particular activity. But if you take a refrigerator as a whole, then it have trays and many other subunits okay. imbibe into it so that it will become as a one unit. Here we are seeing the equipment, anything that is aiding the work to do any kind of activity is equipment that is generally used for labor saving, time saving with efficient performance and better outcome of the activity. Am I right madam? Yes, absolutely because uh, equipment is nothing but the combination of all the things that we have just discussed here like tool, device, appliance, instrument. So anything that help us in doing a particular activity that will come under the umbrella name that is equipment. Now I, can, I see the other word instrument, a mechanical or electronic tool that is generally used for delicate or precision work yeah. such as measuring instrument. Here we can see the pictures of a balance. Another picture we see the measuring cylinder. Another picture we see the cup and this cup one is measuring one cup, another is measuring half cup. So these are instrument I suppose. Yeah. We also use the musical instrument, yes. then we do not use the word appliance. Yeah, they are basically pre precisely for one purpose to execute. And where, so wherever required. the measurement is required, yes, precision, yes, precision, fineness yes, is required. Yes, absolutely. Let us see further. This also saying there are two kinds of equipments. One is electrical and one is non-electrical. Non-electrical are also known as mechanical. So by the name itself. Non-electrical one are the one that we use by using our hand. We don't require any other energy to do it. So if we are talking about the electrical equipment, so electrical equipment are the equipments which we use by using electrical energy. For example, you can see this blender. These are the electrical equipments which will function only if you provide them electrical energy. So same we have like one more thing like the blower. So this will also require to be plugged in into the socket so that the electrical supply can be supplied to it. So now we will move to non-electrical equipment. Yes, I'll keep showing you non-electrical as you told us the kitchen utensils. Yeah. Everybody knows about it. And this is knife. 
and this is sieve. This is rolling pin or the balan. This is grater and this is another type of here I would like to add one more thing Dr. Yeah. Agarwal like we have this blender that we have shown in the earlier right uh, right so the same thing that you do it by using your hand that will require more energy and more time will take so it will require physical work more than the electrical work yeah. and I think in this category we can also use the cooking stove fresh yes. cooker and because they are not used with the electricity so we have some criteria how we should select some of them are need based selection saving of the time money and energy easy to clean safe cost effectiveness and after sale services please explain each one of it in detail to our learners so first we will begin with need based selection, selection of the product so i will start this thing with a simple example like if you are living alone and you are living in a hostel or away from your home and you need to do your everyday uh, activities by your own, you don't have any other help. So you have purchased a 7000 food processor which will have all the things, it will have juicer, it will have grinder, mixer, grater, you know, atta making and everything is there. But you just require to do only to make the milkshake exactly so you need to be very clear what is your need and accordingly we need to have the product otherwise you will just end up wasting more than saving so i think uh, we should not purchase any kind of thing because others have it i know or and yeah. and somewhere we have gone it is cheap let us have it it will work somewhere some time or the other so yes. that should not be the criteria yes. while purchasing or selecting any equipment yes what is the second criteria uh, second criteria that we are going to discuss is on how an equipment can be useful in saving your money, energy and other inputs. Okay. I can also take one example of cooking. You have two options of cooking. Like if you have to make pulses and things like that, you need to soak it into the water and then you have to... Pressure cook it. Yeah, pressure cook it so that it becomes moist and tender. So for that, earlier it was suggested that you can just uh, put it in a pan and just boil like it. At yes. least one hour to cook the dal. But in pressure cooker, we can save the time and exactly. energy. Yeah. And of course, energy in the form of fuel also, fuel we will also. save it. Exactly. So let us see the third point. Cleaning is very tough task, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Can yes. we use it for the, at the time of selection? While selecting, it's also very important that you look for the appliances which are easy to clean. Or the cleaning tools are easily available. Otherwise, small small particles will get stuck into the various minute corners right. and that will impact the efficiency and functioning of it in the longer run. So uh, does that material of the equipment also support in cleaning? Exactly like you have uh, if you take an example of two equipment one is stainless steel and one is iron. If you don't uh, clean iron well then on the edges it will start uh, rusting. rusting. But instead you have stainless steel which is like more user friendly and you can uh, wash it in either way and it will be and I think yeah. nowadays we are having the anodized cookware, anodized cookware they are very well. easy to clean so nobody yes. wants to uh, purchase the brass cookware brass, yes. or the iron cookware because of the ease in cleaning only is it right yes uh, another criteria is safety is very very important exactly so please tell something more about to our learners whenever we go for electrical appliances purchase we always look for the standardization mark like we have Bureau of Indian Standards and we have other standardization authorities that give their own safety marks. For example, this is a blower. It converts electric energy into the heat energy. And in this case, there is a major issue and major danger of getting short circuit right. and fire. So but safety is yeah. very much required so in electrical equipment. safety is very equipments. important in this case. So you can see here, it's called an ISI mark. That. So whenever you go for purchase of any electrical appliances, you need to look for the ISI mark and other Indian standardization mark so that they will ensure the quality and the safety of that product. So there may be any other things also for the safety? Yes. This is the uh, main circuit board. Here we can see a lot of socket pans. 
so it's pretty easy to identify which one is the workable condition which one is like needs repair and it's broken these three are not in the functional state these are broken and these two are in the normal state and they are functional so it's important to have a good material used in making such tools items as well i would like to add one more point here so when you purchase any kind of thing so these are the joints so sometime with the use or while selecting or keeping or we must see these joints also because if these joints are loose or showing any kind of free wire or open wire this can be very harmful next criteria that we need to understand and we need to be very carefully observing is the cost after all it always end end into the cost of the actual material if you can afford the cost then only you can think of buying a particular material so for knowing well the mrp or the maximum retail price of the product that you are going to purchase it's important to look at the label and to read out the other instruction and the main mrp of the product as well the next in the last criteria that we have to look for the select it's uh, more important from the user point of view than from the seller point of view it comes when you have actually purchased your final product that is after sales like whenever we purchase an electrical equipment we are always being worried about how will it function after a while like instantly you will not get to know the actual usage but after a while you will see yeah. what damages and what malfunctioning it will start showing in for that thing you need to be very aware of the after sale services that are being provided by the manufacturer or the seller to the product that you have purchased and in this case what we look for are like 3 hours uh, repair first then replace, replace and then refund we will also learn how to care and how to maintain the household equipments let us see what is the care we should take the correct selection you have already told us yes then correct operation we must know how to operate for example this is one instrument i have to hold it i have to plug it but i do not know this is detachable this is detachable these things are kept aside and i do not know how to fix it and operate it then it will not be of my use so i must know how to operate it and this is the button we can change the setting and the speed so all these things should be known to us before operating it then another very good point is good care and maintenance we cannot use and throw we have to reuse the thing so we have to maintain it in this equipment you have to see the plug point many times if this is by chance is in the kitchen some hot pan is put over it this wire will be open so before operating it should be very clean or should be repaired before use do not touch any equipment particularly when it is functioning with the wet hand or the feet and show that plug is tightly fixed in the socket can you show yeah so you have this plug and you need to be very sure that it fixed tightly into the socket so that the electric current can supply directly into the appliances and prevents the short circuit to take place and some have three pin plug what is the purpose yeah. of three pin and two pin so uh, these two pins are like red wire and the black wire and the third one is for the earths when you need more electric supply into your appliance so you need to provide the third wire called as a earth wire so that and what is the purpose of that so that the extra electric current can just pass to the earth and it will prevent the short circuit okay so that is very important i can see it here that if you get the current or shock from any equipment do not use it again until it has been repaired the picture is showing that that person is getting the electric shock yes so we have to be very very careful we should not pull that person from the electric shock we switch off the electric shock then only you can save the person's life otherwise it can be very threatening also let us see what are the other care fuse what is the role of the fuse we keep on hearing about it yeah the main function of the fuse 
it cut off the electric supply the moment any excessive supply comes from the main circuit it just cut off the supply in every house we have the mcv cut off socket at home you can see in the picture also so wherever there is a high voltage it automatically cuts off and switch off the light circuit yes. or electric circuit yes. this is very important what type of clothes we should wear and please tell us our parents also used to say at our time that you don't need to wear nylon clothes while you are going out for a uh, firing cracker so the same thing applies here also you don't need to wear you always wear cotton uh, clothes while you are uh, working in the kitchen working in the kitchen with fire and with electricity or other hazardous things like that you will never wear or you should not wear nylon clothes because it catches fire so fast and then it will just uh, stick to your flesh we should not also use the free flow type of clothes when cooking if by chance it is there and with the air it is flowing it can burn so always use any kind of tong while removing any kind of utensil from the stove thoroughly clean all the household equipment we have mentioned earlier also this is the fan that runs so you don't have to tamper with this thing you have to just keep it like that and you don't have to put your hand over to it right otherwise the air will not come from this vent so we have to be very careful how to clean it to and we have to be clean it regularly to prevent the dust and the grease because all these dust and grease can easily catch the fire and that is the importance of cleaning regularly and particularly do not clean when they are on or functioning immediately replace the cracked rubber in the cooker you can see the gasket we call it the exposed wire buttons or tubes anything which is either in the stove either in the electric equipment do not use again and again without replacing it do not use any cut or exposed wire in the electric equipment this is again a dangerous thing ma'am please tell something about the gas cylinder we keep hearing lot of accidents what care yeah, we should have so uh, you just you have to be very aware of how to use the gas cylinder when your gas cylinder is empty and you have to replace it with another one you have to just unlock the switch or the lock and then you have to remove the cylinder and then have to put the another one so be very careful so that any kind of gas emission should not happen every household use the pressure cooker but we have to be careful with the weight with the gasket and with the valve so anything is repairable anything need repair has to be replaced before reusing the pressure cooker we are seeing lot of things which are anodized nirle and the same by use the same scrubber what can happen if we use the same scrubber for the steel as well as for the nirle saucepan steel is a very strong metal so it can bear all the wear and tear but if you have like uh, like you have nirle nirle then it has the coating on the edges on on the bottom surface so if you use that iron scrubber to scrub the edges or the leftover food from it then it will alongside will take out the coating layer, as well coating as yes. and that will very harmful exactly. and sometime it will scratch the pan when you second time put the food into it that yes. small particles may not be stick. visible yes. Yes. but slowly slowly will reach to your system, system. Yeah, and very really. harmful for your health also exactly now we are using this uh, microwave oven and all this i think they also need a regular cleaning yes they do require regular cleaning they have like steel tray or the glass pan what so care it, they require besides cleaning so the care that they require is the you have to don't op, keep it open when you have nothing in okay, there okay that is very important yes, the okay. follow instruction carefully before every use yes thank you manisha ji aap we have uh, the our opportunity to have the discussion with them and i think yes. our learners have got lot of benefit with your guidance and take care of their equipments in the household in future also thank, thank you very you so much, much.